My name's Dr Andrew Jennery. I'm a consultant paediatric immunologist and I work here on the Children's Bone Marrow Transplant Unit at the Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle upon Tyne. We are a centre of excellence. We've been transplanting children uh, for over 20 years and children with chronic granulomatous disease for over 15 years and have really led the way in transplanting these children with excellent results, some of the best in Europe. Once we've identified a donor, then we can set a date. We would bring the patient in normally uh, a couple of weeks perhaps before they're due to have the transplant and at that stage they will go to theatre and have actually the only operation that they have which is to have a central venous line inserted. That's a big catheter into a vein, usually in the neck, uh, which means that we can then take blood, give blood and blood products and give uh, drugs through that line. Once the line's in, they'll go into sterile isolation and then we'll start the transplant process. So we need to give a course of chemotherapy, usually around 10 days or so. On the day of transplant itself, there's great excitement, but it's actually quite a, a boring procedure. It's like having a blood transfusion. The bone marrow arrives in a bag, it often looks like blood, it attaches to the line that the patient's had and it trickles in over two or three hours. That's the transplant. There's no surgery involved, there's rarely a doctor involved in that part of it and it's often the nurses or the parents or even the child themselves that may press the button for the transplant to happen. We use a lot of different terms for doing the work that we do, transplant. The one that you're most familiar with is bone marrow transplant. Ultimately, we're interested in the blood stem cell. The fancy term for that is hematopoietic stem cell, but that is the stem cell that we find in lots of different sources that goes on to make new red blood cells and new white blood cells. It's doing that all the time in us. If you have CGD, then you have a defective gene in that stem cell which makes the defective neutrophils, which is why you have the disease. By replacing that stem cell, we're able to put in a stem cell with a normal gene which gives you normal white blood cells, normal neutrophils, so you no longer have CGD. If you look at what's happened over the last, gosh, even 10, 15 years in the field of bone marrow transplant for primary immunodeficiency, there are tremendous changes. Our success rates, generally speaking, have gone from sort of around 60% to closer to 90% or more. I'm not sure we'll ever reach 100%, but there are a whole number of different things that we are doing and continuing to evolve that make the procedure safer and better for patients. After two weeks or so, the new bone marrow starts to work and we see that the, the white cell count in particular that had disappeared completely starts to rise and then we can see are those cells working or not, are they donor cells or not. It's normally um, five to six weeks or so after the transplant before we're happy that things are beginning to be more stable, although it takes up to two years for the transplant completely to have worked. For CGD though, we get the first inkling that things have been a success as the bone marrow starts to come through because the first cells that come through are these white blood neutrophil cells which are defective in CGD and we can do some blood tests and demonstrate that there is donor present and that the, the neutrophil cells that didn't work previously are now starting to work. The transplant process itself is not painful. There is some chemotherapy, which doesn't hurt, and that giving the bone marrow through the line is like having an infusion, and it doesn't hurt. There can be some side effects, particularly from the chemotherapy, and you can get um, what we call mucositis, which is inflammation in the mouth, inflammation in the gut, and that can be painful. We look out for that, we know approximately when it's likely to happen, and if necessary, we will give pain relief. Graft versus host disease is perhaps the complication that people may have heard of. Graft versus host disease is where the new marrow thinks it shouldn't be in the recipient and it tries to get rid of them. Now, there are ways we have of minimising the risk of that happening. We get the best match donor that we can and a good match reduces the risk of graft versus host disease. Because it becomes more difficult to perform a transplant, with a, a smaller chance of success, the older the patient becomes, I think that we should be making these decisions early on, looking to see whether donors are available so that transplantation may be possible. We've just been gathering some data on quality of life, uh, which isn't published yet, but uh, we're still gathering that data. But it looks as though patients who've had a transplant 
have a normal quality of life compared to normal controls, whereas those patients who still have CGD have a, a reduced quality of life. So you no longer have CGD, you can achieve normal growth, you don't need um, your prophylactic medication and your quality of life is normal.